video this morning because it just shows you the importance of being in God's Word. Once, if you just once says, well, you, all you're getting is what I give you on a Sunday morning, you're really going to be a poor Christian. Even, even twice they said it's just like a marginal. Three times there's a little heartbeat on the screen. But Christians who are in God's Word are, are getting sustained by the Word of God four times a week. The, the, it's exponential what it will do for your life. It'll change your countenance. It'll just change the way you deal with us. It'll change your disciple-making um, potential. It changes your life if you at least four times. Can you imagine if you're in it daily? So I would encourage you to do that. Uh, I want to speak to you this morning about when Christians let you down. Because this is an old age. We hear that often, don't we? When Christians let you down. Josh, you with me? There we go. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest complaints about the church is this, that it's full of narrow-minded, judgmental hypocrites. We've all heard this, eh? Christians who claim one thing and they live and they do another. And you've probably seen this yourself. People who claim one thing, hey, you, 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 you know about that guy that just drops Bible verse after Bible verse, everything, and then you see him on the weekend, he gets wasted. What, what type of a person is that? That is a hypocrite. You've got this boss who's always talking Jesus, 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 and then treats his employees with disdain. Terrible. What, where does that come from? Um, remember dad, who, who, hey, daughter, you can't dress like that. Come on, go, you got to get dressed properly. And yet he's the same guy who's watching pornography on the internet. Folks, this is hypocrisy, hypocrisy, and we see it. You know, if we put it in this way, it's, it's like having, going to the Virgin Active Gym, having a, a pizza Friday, free all you can eat. Well, hang on, that's a gym. No, you shouldn't be doing that. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous, like having a Margarita Mondays, come to AA, Tequila Tuesday, or like a Whiskey Wednesday. That, that, that wouldn't work. I said, hang on. This is AA we're talking about. The same that goes for Christians we, who, who, um, who say one thing, profess one thing, and that they live another. So why come, how come they're, they're in the church sometimes there is scandals and abuse and corruption and judgment and hate? If Jesus died for grace and truth, how come there's so much judgment and hate in Christianity today? There's this amazing quote by the name of Brennan Manon. He said, the single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips. Now, that's the easy thing, hey? Then walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. That's what an unbelieving world finds unbelievable. They talk Jesus, 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 and yet their lifestyle says something else. So today I want to say to you, if you've been hurt by Christians who don't live like Jesus, you're not alone. Jesus totally understands what uh, you, you are going through. Because you look in the Gospels, Jesus never spoke more harshly against anyone or anything than those he called hypocrites. He called them hypocrites. Now, in Matthew chapter 23, we, we, we've got uh, what many of you will know is called the seven woes. The seven woes. No, no, Jesus is not riding a horse, not woe. This is woe to you, woe to you. He says seven different times. And he's saying it to people who claim one thing and they live another. They claim one, claim one thing and live another. Let's read from verse 27. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of the religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. You look at the tomb on the outside, whoa, look at that architect, what, beautiful, but inside, it's inside. You've got a rotten body inside full of maggots. Jesus said, that's the way you are. Outwardly, you, you look like righteous people, you know. But inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Outwardly, it's all good. It's, but inwardly, man, it is bad, bad, bad. Now, the interesting thing is 17 different times in the New Testament, we find this word hypocrite. And every single time, it's Jesus who used 
the word. And the, 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 the interesting, thought, interesting thing, in, uh, Jesus only used it for people who claimed to, one, to, claim to be one thing, but their lifestyles, they lived a, another, a, another thing. And here's an interesting thing you've, I already learned this last week, I was sharing with some of the guys during the week, is that the word hypocrite is a Greek theater term. And really, up until the time of Jesus, it was only used in terms of the theater. So they're the actors who had masks on. So they would run onto the stage with one mask, and they would be one person. And they would run off, grab another mask, and come back behind the curtain. The same person with a different mask, and he's acting a different person. That's what a hypocrite was. It was, a, it was an actor who, who used different masks on a stage. And then as far as we know, Jesus was the first person to take that word, hypocrite, take it out of theater and apply it to people whose lives, when they said one thing, but they did something totally different. Jesus gave the word hypocrite a totally different context. And um, Jesus is saying when you, are, when you are giving to be seen, you're a hypocrite. Yeah? When you're fasting to impress, you're a hypocrite. When you're praying to be heard, you're a hypocrite. When, when you are generous while everybody's watching, you're a, you're a hypocrite. You are a play actor. And what is interesting is that Jesus is not calling out people's sin. He's calling out the show. You hypocrites, you're putting on a show for everybody to, so they can think that you are something that you are really not. You know, Jesus is not talking about the people um, on the golf course, they swear when they hit the ball in the bush. I'm not talking about those people. He's talking about the people who, who uh, do the wrong thing and then they act like they do the right thing. So if you are frustrated by Christians, you say one thing and do another, Jesus was too. Uh, and look at Matthew chapter 23 and verse 33. It's interesting. He said, you snakes, you brood of vipers, how would you escape being condemned to hell? Okay, Jesus, why don't you tell us how you really feel? Stop trying to model coddle this. So why do so many Christians get it wrong? Why is it when we hope to represent Jesus in the church, sometimes we do a good job and other times we get it horribly wrong? Number one, I want to suggest to you three things. Number one, some people, people who claim to be Christians, they're not. They absolutely are not. They go to church, they put on the show, you know, Carry the Bible. Woo, look at the big Bible. Also, sounds good. Even got a leather cover, you know. Uh, the, but you know what? There's no transformation there. There's been no repentance. They might have been baptized into Jesus Christ, but there's been no change, no conversion, no new birth. They just got wet. There's no, there's no meaning in their lives. Saying, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They claim to know God. But by their actions, they just deny him. They deny him. Folks, that's what happens. That's the way we put off the world when we say Christian. And yet, we deny him by our actions. Church, going to church, going to church does not make you a Christian just like standing in a garage doesn't make you a car. Believing in Jesus does not make you a Christian. Obeying Jesus makes you a Christian. Tragically, there are some who claim Christ, but they simply do not know him. There has been no con conversion. So number one, there are people who claim Christ, they aren't really Christians. There, there's been no conversion. Then the second, then there's a second group, um, you know, they're Christians, but they knew, they're maturing, they're just starting up, and they mess up all the time. They came out of those, those other lives, thank God for the change, but you know what? They mess up. Hebrews chapter 5, 13 and 14. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, in other words, they babies, uh, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use, and that's why we're encouraging you, get in the word of God, 
attending the Bible studies, get hooked up to a life group because it will change your life. You know, just a, just a, a pop in on Sunday, it, it's not going to change anything in your life. Who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And there's the third group. That's the third group. And I would say it really categorizes many of us. We kind of mature Christians, but you know what? We mess up. We mess up. We're still tempted by that very sly and sophisticated enemy. And, um, you know, when we mess up, it doesn't mean that we're hypocrites. It just means like, yo, we're on the right road, but, but every now and then the devil gets the better of us. You know, we still speak harshly to people, you know, when the stress rises. And, and sometimes even the most faithful give into temptation and, and the, the seat that's placed in their way. And remember, irrespective of how mature you think you are, you're still vulnerable. You're still vulnerable. And I'll tell you what, all of us can think of people who thought they were really, really mature. And before you know what, they messed up big time because they were thought they were impervious to Satan's wiles. The truth is, we are all sin. We all sinners. We all sin somewhere along the road. And here it is. I've said it before. You know, we judge people by their actions. We judge ourselves by our intentions. I think about this a lot. We look at somebody. Look what he did. Look what she said. Can you believe it? You know. And yet, when we say that, when we act like that, oh. You know what? You you know my heart. You know my heart. I'm just going through a stressful time. You you you, you know. You know we blame their character, but we. we you, you know what I intend. I, I know I said that, but what what I intended. I didn't. I didn't intend it to hurt you. We 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 look at our intentions, but we look at other people's character and we we assassinate them. And then we do what Jesus did. We whip out the hypocrite card. And we use it on others. We never use it on ourselves. You know, the interesting thing is, you know, when we, when we sin, God doesn't fall off the throne. He knows we are sinners. He knows we are in need of redemption. Psalm 103 verses uh, 14. Um, God knows how weak we are. He remembers we are but dust. You've got to be careful how you read that passage of Scripture. He remembers we are but dust. Okay, you've got to be careful. That's a New American standard. God knows we were created from dust. He knows we are tempted. He knows we, we like to take the easier way out. He knows we don't like to do the hard yards. He knows we don't want to lose face. And sometimes even when we're mature, we act like we but we but dust. And when you find yourselves hurt by Christians, maybe your expectations or too high. Maybe just used to say, yep, they are they, they just just they just dust. They just potting soil. And after all, we don't have these high expectations of ourselves, although we do. I mean, we mess up and we look at ourselves and I can't believe I said that. I cannot believe I said that. I cannot believe I passed on that WhatsApp joke. Because my level of maturity in, in Jesus Christ I shouldn't be sending stuff like that. We've been born again. But our old nature still kind of, kind of makes its worms its way out there. And we're still capable of sin. Acts chapter 14 has an interesting passage of scripture. Um, and it really just shows us how to handle people who treat us, who are hypocrites. Verses 50, 52. Then the Jews stirred up the influential religious woman. You know what? Wherever you go, there's going to be influential Woman, thank God for that. They were influential religious women and the leaders of the city, and they incited a mob against Paul and Barnabas and ran them out of the out of town. So they so they shook the dust from their feet as a sign of rejection. In other words, okay, don't worry, we're going somewhere else. And they went to a town of Iconium, and the believers were filled with joy. And the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes you just have to move on. And, and uh, sometimes people, you know, good church people, 
like these ladies and these, these, these men in the church, they get led astray. And they, these religious women and men, they hurt Paul and Silas. And so what did Paul, uh, sorry, Paul and Barnabas do? Quit the church? Nah, they didn't do that. They could have focused on the offense. They could have gone on and written pages and yeah, you know, once and sent half, you know, Facebook. You can't believe these people. What hypocrites are. They didn't do that. They said, hey, shake the dust off. Let's move on. Filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Folks, you see, the church doesn't betray us. People betray us. The church doesn't let us down. People let us down. And I guess maybe uh, Paul just turned to Barnabas. Yeah. We're but dust. They're but dust. We mess up as well. Let's just shake the dirt off our feet and let's move on. Um, you know, we some people do this with the church. Hey, church, let us down. We we we, we, you know, we don't do that with restaurants. Hey, we say, whoa, took me tw- took them twenty minutes to bring my burger and fries. I am never going to eat again. We don't do that. Hey, eh? we don't do that. But somehow. We do that with, with the church. Uh, we go back where there, there is food in the house. And when people let us down, we go back. There is food in the house of the Lord. Paul and Barnabas decided they were not going to let the sins of the people keep them from the goodness of God. Acts chapter 13, verse, uh, we, we carry on in this verse. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, people let you down. You know, you just gotta just rise above it and be filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. When people let you down, folks, you can't just keep on walking around like turkeys. It's, oh, you let me down. I'm so weird. I can't believe this. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, ah, sometimes you just gotta shake the dust off and fly like the eagles. You know, the sun still shines up there, filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Church, listen to me. Listen carefully now. I I don't want to minimize it if you have been hurt by the church or with people in the church. You know, that can be really, really serious. And and you might have gone through a really, uh, been put through the ringer by some Christian. But some point in time, you really just have to shake the dust off your feet. Carry on with life and with joy and with the Holy Spirit. You just shake it off. Shake it off. And for some of us, it might take a lot of shaking. It might take a lot of praying. But God does not want you to carry grudges around with you for the rest of your life. I don't know anyone who's full of the joy of the Lord and full of the Holy Spirit who still carries a judge, a grudge. Everyone gets hurt somewhere along the line. No one gets a pain-free ride. And the people who are most full of the joy of the Lord and of the Holy Spirit, they just said, yeah, I was hurt. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Let's just, let's just move on from that. And so the biggest complaint about the church from some people that is full of narrow-minded, judgmental hypocrites, let me say this clearly. If you've been hurt by the church, if you're hurt by people in the church, I really, I really apologize for that. Men, if we as a church, if I as your minister have let you down, I, I am sorry. But when we as church members, uh, you know, when we say something, when we say the Christian thing but we act differently, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That is, that is hypocritical. And we need to repent on, move on to that. Yes, this is hypocrisy. But unfortunately... We as a church, we are sinners saved by God's grace. Now, the church is not a place for perfect people. It's a place for sinners saved by the grace of God. And I really hope if you find yourself hurt by someone who's been hypocritical, you will do for them what Jesus did for you. Offer grace and offer mercy. In conclusion, let me say if you've lost your faith in Jesus because of people, Maybe your faith is in people and not in Jesus. Can I say that again? If you've lost your faith in Jesus because of people, maybe your eyes and your faith has been on people when it should have been on Jesus. If you're doubting God because of what someone else did, look to Jesus. He will never let you down. And then thank you, Jesus, 
for looking at me and looking past my hypocrisy and forgiving the times that I act hypocritically. Isn't it amazing that the people who looked nothing like Jesus were drawn to him? It's the prostitutes, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the lawmakers, the scribes, you know, people who are nothing like Jesus. They just flocked to him because he didn't judge in a way that says you cannot come out of that. And everywhere Jesus went, he showed compassion to the least. He showed, showed compassion to those who were lost in society. He showed compassion to the lost. Jesus had zero tolerance for hypocrisy, but he had unlimited grace for sinners who needed forgiveness. So I don't know about you, but I want to offer the same grace and forgiveness that, that God through Jesus offered me. We repent, we forgive, we shake it off, and the world will know that we are His disciples, not by our perfection, but by our love. And one of the most powerful ways you can love is to forgive. If you're carrying a hurt today, maybe a Christian let you down, maybe a hypocritical Christian let you down, can I ask you to do what Jesus did on Calvary? Just forgive them. Perhaps they've never even said sorry. Maybe they don't even know what they've done to you. Just forgive them. Give them to God and move on. Let's pray together and then we'll sing. Glorious Father, we gather in the name of Jesus this morning. So grateful, Father, for the forgiveness that we have been offered, Father, through your one and only Son. Father, every one of us has been hypocritical in our Christian walk at one time or another. Thank you for your forgiveness. Father, we know Jesus hated hypocrisy. And where we have not, Father, manned up and said, I am sorry, Father, we look into our lives today, into our hearts, and say, oh, yep, that's me, Father. I've been hypocritical. I speak one thing and live another. Father, I pray for all those who have been hurt by Christians, hypocritical Christians, Father, help the healing in their life. Help them to forgive. Help them to be, to be loving. Help them to look to Jesus, who is the perfecter of their faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing.